Yo guys, what's going on? It's your boy, Chris, and welcome to Faith Chapel Students, where our vision is to grow young people up through God's word to reflect Jesus. Hey, look, we are kicking today off with a bang. But before we get into the experience, I just want to say hello to my VIPs or our first time guests. Yo, what's going on, guys? Look, you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here, a part of our family, and we say thank you for that. Hey, before we hop into the experience, let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for this time that we get to experience your word, and we thank you for worship this morning. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hey, let's go. Torn. 
What's up, students? How y'all doing? I'm super excited. My name is Alondio, and we're about to dive into this new series called Temptations. How many of you all live in families, and they don't let you slack on anything, right? I remember growing up, right, my, my parents had to go to work. And so by the time my dad got back home, because he had to drop my mom off, by the time he got back home, my brother and I, we were supposed to have gotten up and had our clothes on, ready to go to school. And there were times where we were still asleep when he got back. And you can kind of guess what kind of happened in those moments. Yes. So, but anyways, my point is, they wouldn't let you slack up on anything. Well, we're going to start a series on temptations. And we're wrestling with what is a temptation and how do we move past it and how do we move through those particular times? How many of y'all have ever, ever, ever been tempted? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Just kind of type it in the chat. Um, You can raise your hand. But how many of y'all have ever been tempted? Well, feeling tempted isn't bad by itself. It's actually a normal part of life. All of us have been tempted or will be tempted by something or someone. Temptation is not a bad thing. We're not talking about temptation so that you feel this thing of resistance. I got to just, I got to resist this or I got to watch this. We're not talking about that, y'all. We're talking about them so that you will have an incredible life full of joy. When you understand that temptations are a part of life, when you understand that, then you can know how to navigate and move in the the right way. So we want to make sure we help you to be equipped with this. So we have some people telling us, to say no and be responsible and some people telling us to say yes and do what we feel see see we got to watch this this tension that we have to wrestle with because there are some people saying um you just got to say no and be responsible and then you got some people say do whatever you want do how you feel because what you feeling is what you really want to do that's that is not true that's not true sometimes i feel like slapping somebody but that ain't right. It ain't right for me to just walk up. And, but we see that do what you feel. Sometimes we, I feel like doing something wrong. That ain't right. So, but it's a temptation to want to do that. And so we must make sure that we don't give in to those temptations. And it comes into this amazing letter by this, this one of the, um, leaders or one of the biblical books in the Bible by the man by a man named James. And James is is out loud uh, speaking to this group in the earlier church, early church. And he says this in James in the book of the Bible called James. And in this book, James chapter 1, verse 13, he says this, when tempted I love how James starts this book. He says, well, not to start the book, but start this particular verse. When tempted, when tempted. What's, what's very interesting, James does this. He, he didn't say, if you're tempted. He said, when you're tempted. You are going to be tempted. That That is that is the, the, the environment we live in. That, that is just life, period. When tempted. So you got to be, you got to be alert. You got to be aware of those things that tempt you. And he goes on to say, 
when tempted, no one should say, you got to understand this, no one should say God is the one that tempted me. It's not God. God is not the one that tempts us. God is not the one that's, that's causing the temptation. It's not God. God is not the one doing it. God is not, you will be tempted. You will be tempted. And it says, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. God does not tempt us to do evil. I'm just going to pause there for a second. I'm going to pause. And one of the things we got to wrestle, the ten, one of tension, these tensions we have to wrestle with is because we don't really know what's evil. Anything that's against the scripture, anything that's against the Bible is evil. Anytime anybody tries to make what they want to do to fit within the Bible is tempted. It's evil. That's evil. Anything that does not line up with what God has outlined in the scriptures is evil. Anytime someone is trying to manipulate the scriptures or manipulate the word of God to fit what they want to do, that is evil. I just want, I just, I just need to say that anytime you looking at something on social media that causes you to do something opposite than what the word of God has said, that's evil. And here, James is really outlining this. And James is saying, God is not tempted by evil and God does not tempt anyone with evil but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desires and enticed he brings in these two words evil and enticed i think i think we need to look at those words evil and entice evil means wicked immoral or bad showing us that temptation does not have good intentions. Temptations do not have a good intent. You can be tempted to, to, to grab this, this oatmeal cream pie. Like when I was younger, I used to, um, I would be tempted to get an oatmeal cream pie after my mom already said, you can only get one. And those oatmeal cream pies to me were just like the best. And so, uh, they, we would have them in the cookie jar. And who you think went into the cookie jar to, because the, the, the oatmeal cream pie was always looking at, they, was all, they were always calling me. And that's how temptation does. It always calls you, calls you. It calls you because it wants you to give in to that particular thing. And that's what I... But it was leading me to something wicked because my mom already told me one, leading me to do something wicked. It was immoral because I was disobeying and it was bad because it was adding some stuff to my body that it should, that, that was not very healthy. So, um, so evil and then entice means to be drawn or attracted. I was being attracted to it. I was being drawn to it. And I ended up giving in to it. God wasn't tempting me. My parents weren't tempting me to, 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 I was being drawn to it because it was something that was intriguing to me. It was something that I wanted. I wanted even though I wanted it, I had some guidelines that said, this is not what you do. This is not the direction you are, you are supposed to go in. I was walking in a path where I stayed in this line of being tempted, which I could have shifted because when, 
when it was time to go outside and play, my mind wasn't old to oatmeal cream pies. They weren't on it. My mind, I wasn't even thinking about it. But when I gave my attention to it, I started moving in that direction. And then here's, here's what's very interesting that James says in verse 15. He says, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. So what happened? So there was this moment I was being, I was being enticed. I was being drawn away from being obedient to my mom. And I was being enticed by this. I, there was this moment I was being enticed. But before I got into sin, before I grabbed it, before I took it, there was a moment that I could have resisted. See, see, we, we're living in an environment right now where they say whatever you feel, if 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 you want to do it, you should do it because it's if I love you, then I should just move in this whatever. Whatever you feel, if it does not line up with scripture, if it's not morally correct, then you have to make a, a moment. There's a moment in time when you have to shift and go in a different direction. You have to resist that thing that's kind of trying to pull you towards it. Because if you do not what happens is you give birth to sin, and when sin is full grown, it gives birth to death. You gotta watch that. You gotta watch that. I have these keys here, and these keys represent places I can go, things I can do. I can drive with these keys. I can open up my house door with these keys, but if I end up disobeying my mom and my dad, and I say, hey, um, I'm gonna go to school. And I go to the school, but I don't stay at the school. What happens is the, the, the freedom that I had before, to drive and go has been taken away by a, a decision to be enticed to do evil and it caused sin to take place because now I'm in disobedience. Sin takes place and my parents find out and it robs me. Temptation is designed to rob you from what you, the freedom you had. So now the key that I once had is now being dropped in the garbage can because now what I just done, I just released the freedom that I had because of being moved away, enticed by something that I wanted to do and it end up birthing sin. And when sin is finished, full grown, now I'm done with the freedom that I had. Don't be, don't allow the temptation to go that far. So, so, so this is what I'm encouraging you to do. The Bible says that in Matthew chapter four, verse one through two, then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was led in the wilderness to be tempted. After 40 days of fasting and 40 nights, he was hungry. That temptation came to be hungry. But one of the things that Jesus did was he knew what God, God's word said. And he ended up not allowing the thing that could tempt him to pull him away, but he leaned in to what God would say, what God's word said. 
let what God says about you influence what you do. Not the temptation. Let what God's word says about you influence what you do, not the temptation. We're going to pick this back up next week because I really want to build upon this and help us to see that we, although we're tempted, we don't have to give in to it. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now that you help all of us to understand that when temptation comes, that it does not have to overcome. God, I thank you right now for helping every young person, every adult to not give in, but to resist. God, I thank you that you equip them to resist any temptation that may try to come their way. I thank you, God, for them and for this time and for your help. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless y'all. See you next week. What a wonderful experience we had today. We are so grateful to be a part of a church that is dedicated in teaching young people the word of God and how to apply it in our everyday lives. If you made the decision to give your life to Christ or rededicate, take Faith Chapel to 94000 and press respond. Now remember, we have virtual Bible study every first, second, and third Wednesday of the month. And now for more information, go to faithchapel.net slash students and follow us on Instagram at faithchapelstudents. Hey guys, look, that's all we got for today's experience. For everybody on YouTube, We'll see you next week. And anybody that's watching on Zoom, it's time for small groups. Let's go.